With Amphibia Season 3's mid-season finale fully aired, including King Andreas and Darcy's final preparations to invade Earth damn near complete, there's an idea that's been floating around my head more so now than ever. Is it possible for someone like King Andreas to be redeemed in some way, shape, or form by the time Amphibia concludes? But before I even get into that, I want to talk about the different ways and or forms of a character getting redeemed in a show because it can be a lot more complex than you might think. This will also help gauge where someone like Andreas would be placed. First, there's what I'd like to call the full circle redemption, where a character who starts off as an antagonistic force goes through a journey of self-reflection, eventually joining the side of good. And this is done well enough to where not only the characters in the show fully accept the new person they are now, but the overall viewer base watching said show accepts them too. Peridot from Steven Universe is a perfect example of what I just explained. She was introduced as an enemy to our main cast and eventually became just as much of an Earth lover as the rest of the core Crystal Gem team, becoming widely loved by the fandom as a result because of how well her redemption was handled. Then there's what I'd like to call semi-redemption, meaning a big majority, if not all the main cast of a show can forgive and accept a character for all the bad deeds they've done if they show potential to change, but the audience watching said show are not vibing with the decision these other characters made. This usually occurs with endgame type villains from their respective show. With all the heinous acts they've done, it makes it harder for viewers to feel like they're redeemed, and justifiably so. I feel like Obito Uchiha from the Naruto franchise is a good example of this. This guy killed hundreds of ninja, including Neji Hyuga, both of Naruto's parents, and started the fourth great ninja war. But because Naruto was able to see himself in the past version of Obito, he was not only able to get Obito to turn over a new leaf, but even consider him an awesome person in the end. He literally said that to Kaguya while they were fighting too. As someone who tried to become Hokage, Obito is... Nothing but awesome to me! And I know Obito died and that can be considered part of his redemption, but I mean, I'm mainly focusing on what Naruto was still saying about him after he died. Finally, the come to an understanding slash agreement redemption, which actually isn't even really a form of redemption, but I feel like a lot of people out there think bad guy no longer going out of their way to do bad things equals redeemed. So yeah, I just want to mention that. This is when the main character or characters are able to come to a truce of some sort that no longer makes the main antagonist or supporting antagonist a threat. I'd like to use the diamonds from Steven Universe as an example of this. Although it felt like the diamonds were redeemed for a bit once Change Your Mind aired because they helped Steven cure the corrupted gems on Earth, and Future wasn't announced yet. Once Future came out, though, it assured us that Steven had not forgiven the diamonds for what they had done in the past, and rightfully so, to be honest. They were intergalactic dictators who partook in galaxy-wide genocide. Just take a look at this clip from the episode Homeworld Bound. This, this, this is the last thing I needed to see. I don't want to be you. I don't want to be anything like you. Why won't you just go away? As you can see, Steven still held animosity towards them, especially towards White Diamond after the Change Your Mind events. I'm sure there's more forms of redemption that I didn't mention or don't even know about. It's just that these three are what I see the most of in both Western cartoons and anime. So this comes down to what category I think Andrus is going to fall into if, in theory, Matt decides to take that direction with his character. I think it's safe to say the first option of full circle redemption is completely out of the question at this point. The way I see things is characters like Sasha and Grime, but to a lesser extent, are the two characters that Amphibia is going to give a full circle redemption to. We also have to keep in mind that Sasha has had way more screen time than Katie Andreas, with her road to redemption kind of starting at the end of Reunion. Her redemption has been well over a full season in the making, whereas King Andreas wasn't revealed to be an antagonist until the end of the first temple to us viewers and halfway through True Colors to the main cast. I guess you could argue his lines at the end of Marcy at the Gates could be considered his reveal as an antagonist, but I feel like that's a bit of a reach. Regardless, we didn't have a full scope of his true intentions until about halfway Way through season two. If we couple this with the roles he's had within his few season three episodes, I think we're too far into Amphibia's main story to warrant calling an Andreas Redemption a full circle one. It just wouldn't make sense to put his potential change in character on the same level as Sasha's, Peridot's, or even Bismuth's. I know I'm making a lot of Steven Universe references, but that show redeemed more characters than I have fingers on both hands. And the list of just straight up wrong things Sasha has done doesn't even compare to what Andreas has done. Andreas has attempted murder several times on Anne, Sasha, Marcy, Grime, and everyone in the Planner family, destroyed big chunks of Amphibia's ecosystem, wanted Olivia and Yunnan to implement literal slave labor onto Amphibia's citizens, and ordered them to terminate anyone who refused to partake in said labor. Of course, we can't forget the overall grand plan to invade Earth, become the de facto tyrant ruler, then proceed to go to other worlds the Calamity Box has access to and rule over them as well, thus becoming the de facto tyrant king of the multiverse. To make a full circle redemption for a character like Andreas not feel like an ass 
fast pull or insanely rushed, he would need to have an even longer road to redemption than someone like Sasha, who, while was a very manipulative person who craved power, never took her actions as far as Andrea's did. With Amphibia Season 3 being not only the final season, but also being halfway done, it just wouldn't feel right to me to watch Andreas walk off scot-free even if he chose to help stop Darcy slash the core in the end. For a semi-redemption to work, we'd need to know a lot more about King Andreas' past with not only the core, but with his frog and toad friends. I'm talking an entire episode dedicated to his past. Learning what happened with his friends, why the core doesn't respect him even to this day, if the voice we heard at the end of the season 3 trailer was actually directed to a past version of Andreas rather than Marcy. Many of us just assumed that voice was talking to Marcy because it spoke right before seeing the sneak peek of Marcy getting possessed by the core. But here we are, with the first half of the season done, Darcy in full control, and that voice line has yet to be said in a season 3 episode. At this point, I think the only way that voice could still be talking to Marcy is if we get some kind of mindscape scene with Marcy's conscience still fighting to stay active, while the voice of the core thinks her struggle is pointless, so she should just give up and give in. Everything I mentioned would need to be explored fairly in depth, not just vaguely, if a semi-redemption route were to be the endgame for Andreas. But even then, I don't think it would warrant Andreas just being able to walk off free when the battle is over. Now for the come to an understanding route, which is a route that would transpire if Darcy slash the core took control over the invasion rather than being an equal partner to Andreas slash a behind the scenes string puller. Andreas' past being explored to a solid degree can also be applied to this last route, just to be clear. I couldn't see someone like Andreas just watching idly by as his plans were taken from him, putting up with all that disrespect, wanting to prove himself worthy to the core, being able to finish the work his family never got to finish, abandoning his old friends, all of it would have been for nothing, leading to a temporary truce with Anne to stop Darcy and rescue Marcy. I don't believe Andreas doing this would be out of character either, given the context. He did care about Marcy to some extent, even after revealing his true intentions. He was even against the idea of the core using Marcy as a vessel. However, he eventually had to submit to the idea because the core wouldn't budge on wanting Marcy. King Andreas may be a tyrant, but you can't say he's completely heartless. He's able to act goofy and gets laughs out of any kind of situations he's in, even if it's business related. Sure, he wanted to kill Anne with that new drone and froggy little Christmas, but he was having oodles of fun in the process. The man always tries to make the most fun out of any situation he's in, whereas the core hive mind seems to be all business all the time. Not caring if Andreas had a liking for the vessel it wanted, or not commenting on Andreas's failure in an even semi-joking manner, just straight up calling him pathetic and how he shouldn't even be allowed to call himself a king. These two may have the same goal in mind, but having such different personalities could spell disaster. If Andreas does help save Marcy and stop the core, this does not mean he would just go back to being king of Amphibia in the end. That boy is going to jail for life. With Andreas behind bars, that could leave the throne open to someone like Lady Olivia or Grime. Lady Olivia is the more realistic choice, but having Grime at least be more high-ranked in Amphibia's hierarchy, and having that promotion feel deserved would be a very good conclusion for his character, in my opinion. As for what I think, I'd honestly be relatively okay with any of these outcomes for King Andreas if handled properly. Andreas is one of those characters where they wrote him and presented him to the audience in a way that there's no clear-cut endgame for his character in the finale. The core, for instance, is 100% going to be annihilated, but you definitely can't say the same for Andreas. I'd say the most probable outcome would be to come to an understanding ending, which, like I mentioned earlier, isn't really a proper redemption. I'd love to know what you guys think, though. Do you think it's possible for King Andreas to be redeemed? If so, let me know why or how it could be done in the comments below. I'm curious if you guys have any other redemption slash truce routes in mind that I didn't already mention in this video. And I want to send lots of love to the talented Bone Janky for making the art for this thumbnail. They've done amazing art for previous video thumbnails on my channel as well for my buddies over at the round table. The art from this thumbnail in particular was inspired by this shot from Naruto Shippuden opening 16. Yes, two times in a row where my commissioned thumbnails referenced an anime opening. I know, I'm a mega weeb. Let, let me live. Of course, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to leave a like down below. It helps out a ton. But for now, I will see you guys next time. Peace out. Take care. Bye-bye.